Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Automation Engineer. We are in chapter 6. We are done with all the tutorials of chapter 6 and now looking at the sample questions of this particular chapter. There will be 5 questions from this chapter expected to be appearing in the examination. So prepare well as we have 4 topics and 5 questions from that. The very first question here, what is the most common basis of an automated test script? Of course, we understand that to have the automated test scripts, the basis is the manual test cases which would be required to understand what is that you want to automate as a part of the scripting. So generally, if you look at the options here, we have the very straightforward answer, but GTAA is the test architecture for the automation, which is not the basic component. SUT is a different part altogether. It's a counterpart of the automation test. The functional requirement is uh, another thing which we generally try derive the test cases from but not the complete or core basis of it to derive automated test scripts we need manual test cases so the right answer here is C a manual test case the next question is who should provide feedback to a TAE when implementing the new features to an existing test now when you talk about implementing a new feature to an existing task, of course we would need someone who will be uh, experienced in that particular domain, would be required to get the inputs consistently from them being an expert of that particular subject matter so that the TA can actually get revert on the implementation being done. So here if you look at the options we have A business analyst, B senior uh, manager, C test designers with domain expertise and system administrators. Now, I think we understand business analyst, system administrator, and senior managers having a different portfolio altogether. But of course, a test designer with a domain expertise could be very helpful to TAE, that is test automation engineers, when implementing the new feature. So the right answer here is C, the test designers with domain expertise. Question number three, which of the following is the best reason for automating the confirmation test of a defect? So we understand what is confirmation testing. We have recently understood in the previous tutorial about automating, uh, considering the factors to automate the confirmation testing. Now let's look at the option here. A, to close a gap in the existing automation. B, to ensure that the fix works and continues to work. To justify the time spent finding the defect to test the configuration management process. First of all, right from the unmost, most unwanted uh, options listed here is the configuration management, which has nothing to do with the regression. Though we can relate things, like the version would be required every time a new fix has been resolved. Uh, so D is actually not having any specific objective or reason to work on the automation of information testing. C, to justify the time spent for finding the defect, I think that's also equally relevant irrelevant to uh, support the question and a to close a gap in existing automation if we have gaps in existing automation we would rather create or ramp up the automation test instead of working on confirmation testing so here the best answer is B or the right answer is B to ensure that the fix works and continues to work and of course to validate that we would need an automated test because automated test is something which can be repeated and executed quite often without thinking. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Hope you understood the concept of the sample questions from this chapter. Should you have anything beyond this, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team, and happy learning.